Sometimes miracles occur in the most unlikely places. This small country has been dominated by its neighbors and denied freedom for most of its history. In the center of its capital, Tallinn, remains one of the best preserved medieval cities in Northern Europe, a testament to what can be created through free trade. Since its independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, sweeping economic reforms have transformed Estonia. It's now the most competitive new member of the European Union, and the Wall Street Journal ranks it as one of the freest economies in the world. Joan Norberg is a Swedish author and scholar specializing in global trade issues. A lot of tourists today. Just 15 years ago, this was a poor part of the Soviet communist dictatorship. There were bread lines, 1,000% inflation, but then with the right institutions, democracy, free trade, free markets, suddenly people had the opportunity to improve their lives with entrepreneurial creativity. And now this place is booming with the fastest growth rates in Europe. So it shows the rest of the world that freedom works. In an older neighborhood on the outskirts of Tallinn is the home of one of Estonia's most dramatic success stories. The Estonia Piano Company is now producing an instrument that rivals the finest pianos on the market. People everywhere are entrepreneurs. They want to produce, buy and sell things because they want to improve their lives for themselves and for their families. And Estonians have always done that. They were creative, entrepreneurial up until the communist occupation. For 50 years, Estonia was ruled by the Soviet Union, its economy stifled by the central control of production and distribution. Although Estonians won their independence from Russia after the First World War, they lost it again to the Soviets during the Second. In those bleak times, the Estonia Piano Company manufactured instruments only for the Soviet republics. Like most young Estonian men, Uramas Uranorm was drafted into the Soviet army. Today, he's a master craftsman, but still remembers the hardships of his youth. Janus Randvir is also a master piano craftsman. He has worked at the Estonia Piano Company for 45 years, he will never forget the Soviet era. Selle aeg see tärksad inimesed oli isali ka niukune. Viidi ära, lihtsalt viidi ära. Oli oma, oma kaks kolmeist aastat metsatöödil ja kaivandustes ja, ja Siberis. Ma olin kaheksanda klassi võis, kui ma praktiliselt esimest korda nägin isa. For a company here in Estonia, before the reforms, they were stuck in a planned economy. It was impossible for them to get the kind of goods, the supplies that they needed. With the abolishment of price controls, of protectionism, of communism, suddenly this entrepreneurial spirit springs up and creates magical wonders. But even with Estonia's new independence and the eventual success of painful economic reforms, the Estonia Piano Company and its craftsmen remained trapped in the past. For 40 years, they had built pianos exclusively for the state. Standards were low, but it was a steady business. They were forced to buy most of their materials from within the Soviet Union, and they could only sell pianos within the Soviet Union. There was no competition, no incentive. The instruments were sturdy, but hardly world-class. Production dropped from 500 pianos a year to a low of 49 in 1994. The National Concert Hall in Tallinn. Urmas is here with his daughter, Trine. He's on assignment. Indrek Laul, concert pianist and graduate of the Juilliard School of Music, is practicing for a performance. He's playing a new Estonia piano, and Urmas is here to ensure it's in perfect condition. Urmas, palun tulappi. 
But Indrek Laul is not just any concert pianist. As a young man in Estonia, he worked at the piano factory, demonstrating new instruments for customers. As the company continued to struggle and the value of its shares continued to drop, Indrik bought as much stock as he could. In 2003, he gained controlling interest in the troubled company. He's now its president. When he took over, his daunting task was to keep the company alive. His answer was quality. Piano is bought once in a lifetime. And so they want to get the most beautiful piano sound, the most beautiful quality piano they can get. I thought that the best we can do is offer the most quality instrument we can make. Centrally planned economies don't work because you can only get people to do the same old thing, to repeat what they've already done, the same old piano, for example. What you need is the new entrepreneurs, the innovators with strange new ideas who come in from the side, like this guy who comes with a brilliant idea for a new piano, introduces hundreds of changes, and then suddenly is going global, selling all over the world. Today, the Estonia piano benefits from the finest quality imports and techniques from around the world. Wood for the soundboard comes from the cold climates of Switzerland and Austria. Slow growing trees make narrow rings that help carry the sound. Keys are carved from spruce, making them light and sensitive. The keys are the driving force of the piano action, which is imported from Germany. All the bass strings are handmade at the factory. Copper wire adds width, which lowers the tone. Master craftsmen shape and soften the hammers until the sound is rich and concentrated. Every piano is broken in by this unique machine. The strings are stretched. It is then sent for tuning and voicing. Now in a new free Estonia, having abolished all the tariffs and become a part of the global economy, it's possible for an Estonian piano company, for example, to buy the best goods, the best supplies, the best material from whichever source it happens to be wherever in the world. Then they can also improve their goods and sell it to the rest of the world. We still have 88 keys and uh, the amount of strings we have on the piano is the same. Everything else has been changed. It's a completely different instrument what it was. To help save the company, Indrik enlisted the help of his father, Venno Laul, an internationally known choir director. Venno works alongside the craftsmen, supervising the many changes and ensuring quality. During World War II, he was only five years old when the Germans imprisoned his father and executed him. Kui me saime vabaks, siis oli see niivõrd suur muutus kogu meie ühiskonnale, et me esialgu ei saanud kui võib-olla aru, mida alanud uus aeg meile tähendab. Alles nüüd maailma avanades meie jaoks. Meil on ka kaupa, mida suurte maailma saata. Estonia pianos are now sold worldwide and rank close to Steinway in quality at about half the price. We can clearly see that the great benefit of free trade is cheaper goods, which means that consumers, they gain from it. But we often forget that the workers also gain so much. Estonia Klaver on sellepärast nii hea, et ta on tehtud käsitööle. Ja sellepärast, et mina teen selle Klaveri. Kui keegi Klavereid ei osta, siis minu elu ka ei lähe hästi. Et loomulikult on see hea, kui Estonia klavereid müüaks igal pool maailmas, sellepärast, et siis palgapäev on hea päev. Ja... We have created the Estonia sound. It's like no other piano sound you can find. It has that deep, romantic, rich tone that for me represents not only Estonia piano making, but also Estonia musical culture.
I don't think without free trade, our company would even exist right now. Julgeks on näel, et ta küü kõigile rahvastele, kes veel ei ole saavutanud vabadust ja vabakaubandust. Et see on eesmärk ja see on ideaal, mille nimel ei ole küll liiga suur ükski ohver. Selle nimel on tasunud elada, et seda kogeda.